universities of india and they are very sincere uh, as this is my fourth or uh, fifth nb workshop as a coordinator and i am lucky that uh, always i am getting very sincere participants sir so they will be on mute board uh, and uh, if you will ask them only then they will open their mics and uh, participants uh, we have with us a very senior teacher from aligarh muslim university a professor masrur alam sir from civil engineering department aligarh muslim university a pure scientist social scientist and scientist as well uh, he has completed his bsc msc mphil phd in geology from aligarh muslim university sir research interest is sedimentology petroleum geology engineering geology rock engineering environmental geology natural disaster studies etc sir has qualified his grf in 1990 at that time qualifying grf is a big deal uh, still it's a big deal and at that time it was unthinkable and he has published a good number of papers in various uh, reputed international and national journals he has also published uh, many books one of the one of the books is on fundamentals of engineering geology and geo uh, engineering in 2013 he has written he, he has also edited few books uh, he has contributed for e pg patshala under ugc's project uh, he has written nine chapters on engineering geology sir has published uh, more than 50 research papers sir has presented uh, around 40 research papers in different seminars and conferences uh, sir has delivered this uh, talk as a resource person in many uh, programs sir has uh, been the resource person in uh, many re orientation refresher courses fdps uh, around th 35 programs has been uh, he has been the uh, resource person around 35 programs sir has supervised uh, uh, around 15 mtech dissertations and has also supervised many phds successfully uh, sir has successfully completed projects for crores of rupees and uh, apart from these academic uh, responsibilities he has been on some administrative posts like he has been the director joint director of center for promotion of science sir has been nodal officer nirf of engineering college member of grivan cell he has been the successful provost of nadim tarin hall aligarh university he has been the coordinator of NSS uh, from 2017 to 2020, where I have worked under him as one of his program officers. Uh, he has been the member of many academic bodies like MU Court, Academic Council, academic uh, other academic bodies also. And uh, a very, a very good human, apart from very good uh, teacher, apart from very good researcher, he's a very good human being also. Sir, we are very happy. We are grateful that you have, we ha you have given us time, sir. Every time, whenever we listen to you, it's always a treat to listen, sir, a treat to watch. Thank you once again, sir, for giving us time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Shahid Saab, for your introduction. A detailed one, in fact, you have given. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. OK, thank you. I have put a few queries in this very slide. And the answer you can write in message, not exactly just now. You can wait and answer afterwards. And you can answer just like this. To save time, you can put Y for yes and N for no. Most of the answers are in the form of yes or no. It's just to know that uh, uh, how how much you are aware of uh, this issue of uh, climate change, pollution, uh, waste management, and biodiversity. I am basically an earth scientist. I have done my PhD in geology, uh, but I am teaching in Department of Civil Engineering. Civil Engineering, which deals with the construction uh, it has a course called as engineering geology uh, because many of the constructions they are done in hilly areas and in rocky areas especially dams and tunnels and roads and rail tracks so that's why they have to have basic understanding of geology so that's why i am in department of civil engineering rather in the department of geology so let's start with the topic uh, that is uh, 
climate change and issues related to it. We are into new education policy, which has been uh, refurbished and uh, molded into national education policy 2020, that is some three or four years back. In this education policy, it says that uh, we should ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. We as a teacher, we are the first learner. A teacher is a boy who goes to a school but never comes out. In this inclusive and equitable quality education, what is most important is that all of us maybe from different subject areas, having a specialization in different subject, subject areas, maybe social sciences, arts, humanities, sciences, commerce, technology, medicine, we all have to have, understand that the home, the home of all of us, that is earth, that has to remain as pristine as it can be. So for this, in National Education Policy 2022, the issue of environment and climate change and pollution has been given a lot of focus. Now, the issue of climate change is very important and you keep on hearing this issue on social media, on television, on radios, and in newspapers. Every other day, you will have some issue which will be related to issue of weather, environment, climate change, and so on. So now the question is that is this a news? Climate change is a news only, or it is a fact? So please write down again one more question that what do you think? Do you think that the issue of climate change is real or just it is a news or hoax? Whatever you think, you can write down in your uh, message box so that I can have under, an understanding that what level you are thinking, at what level you are thinking as far as climate change is concerned. Now I will put my slides and in my slides you will find lot of newspaper cuttings. You will find lot of newspaper cuttings and in most of the newspaper cuttings you will also find the date on which I have collected this news. I keep on reading and I keep on collecting news items which are related to the issue of weather, pollution, and climate change, and so on and so forth. So the very first time, the very first time this issue of climate change was accepted by United uh, States National Academy of Science in 1978, that there is a kind of uh, uh, climate change. In 1896, a very famous Swedish chemist, Swante Arrhenius, predicted that global warming will take place due to burning of coal. The industrialization and the world which we are seeing today is because of industrialization in Europe in 18th century, and that was because of finding of coal. So he predicted that when we are going to burn a lot of coal, we will be releasing carbon dioxide and in future, there will be, there will be global warming. So this was predicted as back as 1896, almost 130 years back. Then a book was published in 1962 by uh, uh, Rachel Carson. Silent Spring. In this book, it was envisaged 
that we are going to lose lot of plants and animals in future us national academy has accepted and has predicted that yes global warming is taking place then in 2007 united nations has established a committee or a group comprising different countries called as known as international protocol for climate change and they have accepted that global warming is taking place and what else they have come to conclusion is that this global warming is strongly influenced by the anthropogenic activities that is human beings are the cause of this global warming and if there is no human component even if we take that there is no human component human beings are not involved but still there is a global warming so we have to see that what will be the effect of this global warming now global warming on the earth means some rise in temperature or you can also have global warming because of excessive heat generation by natural factors so we have to see that what could be the natural factors and what could be the anthropogenic factors which lead to global warming and which will lead to the climate change now as i have I, as i have seen the list of the participants most of the participants they are from bengal and uh, east most of the participants they are from bengal and east which is a area where we have lot of rainfall now are you satisfied with the amount of the rainfall which has taken place till now the monsoon almost one month is almost getting completed for the monsoon but do we have enough rain as we used to have some 10 15 20 years back so just just observe now earth has a very special place in our planet system because this is the planet which has life why it has life why no any no other planet has got life the reason is that overall temperature which we have on this earth varies in between plus 60 degree centigrade to minus 60 degree centigrade and we have water and oxygen and because of plus 60 minus 60 degree centigrade temperature range the water can live in all the three state of solid liquid and gas so our earth is very a special planet this is third from the sun the first is mercury followed by venus then earth so the distance from the sun is such that the sunlight which comes on the earth is able to create temperatures in between plus 60 to minus 60 degrees centigrade the other two planets which are closer mercury and venus they have average temperatures plus 200 degrees centigrade now after earth lies the mars mars distance is much more than the earth and the sunlight are not able to reach there in enough quantity so the average temperature of mars is minus 200 degrees centigrade everything is in frozen state so we have we have many important things for the survival of the life that is water oxygen carbon and temperature so this is the heaven for the life system as of now now our earth is made up of different spheres the topmost is the atmosphere then we have biosphere then we have hydrosphere then we have lithosphere asthenosphere barysphere that is from top to interior part of the part of the earth atmosphere in which we have all the gases including nitrogen oxygen and other gases 
biosphere all the life plant animal human beings hydrosphere all the waters in the form of ice liquid and vapor lithosphere is the ground over which we are residing litho means rock so it's a sphere of rock and soil it is almost 200 km thick below lies asthenosphere asthen means something which is plastic asthen means something which is plastic which can flow under pressure so we have 800 km thick layer inside the earth which is called as asthenosphere then remaining 5371 km is clubbed together and is called as barry sphere this barry sphere actually contains inner core then outer core then lower mantle and then upper mantle and in lithosphere what we have continental crust oceanic crust and lower mantle part of the lower mantle now what we have done we have created one more sphere we have created the human beings have created one more sphere which is called as built sphere or technological sphere now this built sphere has been made by using material from atmosphere from biosphere from hydrosphere and from lithosphere we have used material to construct built sphere which includes buildings which includes roads which includes rail tracks which includes all the things which you see around you everything has come from the mother earth asthenosphere the asthenosphere which is below lithosphere this this affects us by some activity which le which leads to the earthquake and volcanism so we are connected with asthenosphere also similarly in barry sphere also the innermost part that is solid inner core and liquid outer core interacts with each other to create a sphere which is called as magnetosphere which is at the top of the atmosphere and this magnetosphere controls the communication which we are having today in the form of electronic communication or radio communication or wireless communication the communication which is actually helping us to talk with each other in this uh, program but what has happened this making of built sphere or technosphere has resulted into pollution of hydrosphere and atmosphere which provide the most essential fluids for life for example oxygen and water and our lithosphere has become so deranged and so injured that it has lost its its uh, beauty at many different places all these spheres they interact with each other which creates our environment so now again come back to the issue of climate change the climate change is the change which we are taking which we are seeing in a proper season not the four season which we used to have winter summer rain and spring that is not a climate change the climate change is change within a season so it can be warming it can be cooling it can be excessive precipitation it can be even change in the wind direction now this climate change is nothing new as far as the history of the earth is concerned which is 4550 million year old 1 million year is equal to 10 lakh years so if you divide 4550 into 10 lakhs that is the age of the earth and through its whole age the the earth has changed its climate many many times earth was a snowball just 2 million years ago means 20 lakh years ago the earth was a snowball before that it was a humid tropical climate before that it again was a snowball so climate has changed many times but it has taken millions of years the climate change which was natural has taken millions of years 
but the climate change which we are talking is taking place within a span of 3 to 400 years this is taking place within the span of 200 to 300 years now you see the newspaper cuttings the news have come in 19 2018 when roger federal lost to australian john millman he said that in the tennis arena the temperature was very high on the right side picture you can see in 2019 in in australia people have made omelette they have cooked egg in the sunlight and in india this year there were few places where temperature has almost reached 48 49 degrees centigrade and people have cooked egg there also so this is what is called as climate change excessive heat or excessive cold or excessive rain for a very long period of time in 2019 in australia the temperature was more than 38 degrees centigrade people have thronged to beaches to 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 save us save them from the heat at one extreme and in the same year in the united states of america the temperature has gone down by minus 39 degree minus 39 degree so much so that if you can see the jeans pants they are standing without men or women in it these jeans pants they got frozen similarly we have problem of global warming which is causing lot of forest fire the picture you are seeing top one is from california and bottom one is from the hawaii island that the 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 forest fire they are not under control this year we saw in uttarakhand that there was lot of forest fire there was lot of forest fire and we didn't had any mechanism to douse that fire we were waiting for the rain even after 2 3 or 4 spell of rain in uttarakhand the forest fire could not be extinguished completely same is happening in united states of america in californian forest from last 10 years the forest fire is raging and a country like united states with lot of technology to its hand is not able to completely douse the fire and more than 200 people have lost their life there now if you see the statistics the statistics says that this temperature nowadays which is being in rising trend and it is being termed as global warming has also seen cooling from 1880 to 1910 similarly it has also seen cooling in 1993 similarly there was a time when the temperature rise was very slow so if you see this picture which is telling you the history of global warming from 1850 to 210 we have three major episode of global warming one episode of global cooling and one episode of very slow rise you can see the graph is going up and down but the average which was worked out shows that from 1875 or 60 to 1900 we had a global cooling also similarly in 1993 to 1995 there was a global cooling now what is the cause of this global warming or this global cooling 
what could be the natural factor and what could be the anthropogenic factor. The overall temperature which we have, it is because of the solar heat which is coming on the earth. The surface of the sun has got temperature almost 6000 degrees centigrade. This temperature is because of hydrogen converting to helium and then helium is breaking into the hydrogen. Fusion and fission reactions is are leading to the heat which is being generated at the sun and then this heat travels and comes onto the earth and then it heats the earth. Now what happens when this heat comes on the earth? It hits the ground and then goes back into the space. While going back, it is, it is trapped by greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases are H2O, that is water vapor, carbon dioxide, that is CO2, CH4, that is methane, NO2, that is sulfur uh, nitrogen, uh, nitrous oxide, and SO2, that is sulfur dioxide. These gases are called as greenhouse gases in which carbon dioxide has maximum concentration and followed by H2O and CH4 and NO2 and SO2. Now, if you remove all the greenhouse gases, now this word greenhouse has come from a glass house which is made by botanists or which is made by agriculturists to grow plants. What they do, they make a hut-like house of glass which traps carbon dioxide and heat and this becomes helpful for plant to grow. Nowadays, greenhouse gases are being made using green plastic sheets. They are not that real greenhouse, but they are modern greenhouses using plastic green sheets. Now, if we remove all the natural greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, our temperature will drop to minus 18 degrees centigrade. The average temperature of the earth is taken 15 degrees centigrade. From 15 degrees centigrade, it will go down to minus 18 degrees centigrade. That means there will be snow all around the world there will be drop of 33 degrees centigrade of temperature. So greenhouse gases are important. The nature has given us these greenhouse gases to protect us from the sun heat. On the Venus, 97% of the gases are carbon dioxide and that's why their surface temperature is 480 degrees centigrade. Their surface temperature is 480 degrees centigrade. So carbon dioxide is a very important gas, which is in all only 0.004%. Only 0.004% we have carbon dioxide. Just imagine, not even half percent of all the gases. 79% is nitrogen, 78% is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, and in 1% we have all the gases, which includes carbon dioxide, H2O, CH4, NO2, SO2, or many, many other gases. So just imagine, only in 0.004, in, in, there is a little increase in that can create global warming. Now, there can be another reason of overall temperature change on the Earth. That is Earth's rotation on its axis, which brings us day and night. Earth rotates around its axis, which is tilted to 22.1 degree, and Earth rotates around us at the speed of 1660 km per hour, which we are not able to feel. Our Earth is rotating on its axis at the speed of 1660 km per hour. 
now if we change the tilt if we change the tilt from 22.1 degree to 21.5 degree or from 22.1 degree to 23 degree everything will change the solar rays will fall at different places once we change the earth rotational axis this can also bring the change this can also warm some places and can cool some places scientists are saying that indonesian earthquake in 2004 and japanese earthquake in 2011 which bring tsunami which brought tsunami in the ocean pacific ocean that has affected the earth's rotational axis and it has changed from 22.1 to 21.45 degree because of the churning of the oceans because of the tsunami so there can be a little effect of this another important activity is that sometimes the sun surface becomes highly active the conversion of hydrogen to helium and then breaking of helium to hydrogen sometimes becomes very fast and this is called as solar activity and it creates solar spots which results into solar storms and excessive heating so this can also be the factor for example in this picture if you can see solar spot activity took place in october 2022 this year also this has happened i am showing you some videos of solar spot activity which is taking place on the sun at the day time and at the night time from the earth so this creates excessive heat when the sun surface can create excessive heat it can transfer that excessive heat to the earth and we may feel global warming but this global warming will be very temporarily it will be for few days to few weeks but what we are observing today a long term change on the average temperature of the earth surface as well as of the ocean surface now next issue is of greenhouse gas production now whatever gases we have in our atmosphere including nitrogen oxide including oxygen including carbon dioxide including all other gases including water vapor all these gases have actually came out from the earth itself the gases which we have in our atmosphere they were produced by the volcanism which took place on the earth surface we call it degassing of the earth earth has lot of volcanoes even today through which lot of gases they come out and goes to atmosphere and then our gravitational force keep them they keep uh, they they they, they held them back to the earth but what is happening that with time earth is losing its heat and temperature with its age and this volcanic activity is becoming less and less as compared to what we had in the past for example just to show you 65 million year back 60 to 65 million year back we had volcanism in india which has produced lava up to 3 km thick and which got are uh, spread over almost all central india for example maharashtra madhya pradesh andhra pradesh karnataka rajasthan part of gujarat they are they were all covered with volcanic lava we call them deccan basalt ya deccan flow ya deccan lava deccan for south south volcanism and that was the time when volcanism took place all over the world the earth was punctured at this time between 60 to 65 million years there was volcanism in africa there was volcanism in europe there was volcanism in australia there was volcanism in india there was volcanism in australia there was volcanism in antarctica 
the earth was punctured and lot of global volcanism took place which led to the extinction of dinosaurs the dinosaur got extinct because of that volcanism and many other life also got extinct in that volcanism no whatever carbon dioxide is produced whatever excessive gases are produced they are being taken back by plants and oceans and animals animals consume carbon dioxide they consume oxygen and give carbon dioxide plants consume carbon dioxide gives you oxygen oceans they used to act as a sink for carbon dioxide they used to act as a sink for carbon dioxide and they absorb carbon dioxide but oceans though they are three fourth of all the earth we have they have absorbed so much carbon dioxide that now they are not able to absorb more carbon dioxide because they have become acidic they have become acidic because the animal life which used to secrete carbon dioxide from oceans their population is getting reduced so if their population is getting reduced the carbon dioxide sequesters are getting reduced and that's why the overall co2 dissolved in ocean water is less so this is resulting into the ocean acidification and with increase in more and more carbon dioxide the temperature of ocean surface is also increasing you can see this from this very graph now why we fear why we fear global warming the main cause of fear of global warming is that that this global warming will lead to the melting of ice and this melting of ice will lead to the increase in the sea level and the increase in the sea level will result into flooding of the coastal areas and more important complete drowning of the small islands which are present in the oceans many islands in pacific ocean they have vanished under the rising sea level and people have to left have to leave those islands and they are being given uh, they are being given a space for living by new zealand no global warming will lead to the ice melting and that will lead to the sea level rise that is one issue but even if we think that there is no ice melting simple global warming will increase the sea level when we heat water on the gas stove when we heat water over fire the volume of water increases so even we don't have to wait for the melting of ice for the global sea level rise only simple heating of ocean water will increase the sea level that is the main reason that we are fearing global warming now if you can see this picture this picture i have taken in 2013 at goa where what we are doing we are trying to protect this coast from sea erosion from sea wave erosion by putting concrete tetrapod and concrete blocks if you are able to see this picture this we are doing to check the coastal erosion this we are doing to check the coastal erosion now why there is a coastal erosion because of sea level rise why there is a sea level rise because of global warming why there is a global warming because of carbon dioxide generation and methane generation why there is a carbon dioxide generation because of anthropogenic activity and most important anthropogenic activity is the construction in which we have maximum of carbon footprint 
in which we have maximum of carbon footprint. So, if we are constructing this concrete tetrapods and concrete blocks, we must have generated a lot of carbon dioxide. So, we are caught up in a vicious circle. To protect from the CO2 rise, we are creating more CO2. Now, what is this? Can anybody answer? Can anybody answer what is happening here? Can anybody tell me what is what this video is trying to show you? Anyone? Continental drift. So Pratim Mukherjee has said that this is continental drift. Now this picture of 15 seconds is actually representing time of last 60 million years. This has happened in last 60 million years when Pangaea was broken into Laurasia and Gondwana land and then Gondwana land was further broken into Africa, South America, Australia and Saudi Arabia and whatnot. Now, if this is happening, then all the countries will have different latitudes with time. Africa, India, which was in southern latitude, now it has become to northern latitude. So that means if it is moving, the India is moving in, in, um, in the rightmost, see if you can see. If continents they are moving, then their latitudes and longitudes will also change, and accordingly, their climate will also change. Yes, of course, but this is a process which has taken more than 50 million years, which has taken place in 50 million years. This is a continental drift theory which was given by Alfred Wegener in 1900, uh, 1900 and it was rejected. <coughs> Later on in 1960s, another theory came called as plate tectonics, which is extension of continental drift theory in which it is said that continents, they keep on moving, even today they are moving, and today we are able to measure their different directions and velocities. This is called as theory of plate tectonics, in which it has been said that continents are broken and then they move from one place to another place. Part of the continent are ocean floor, they are subjected back into the earth and so on and so forth. The rate of this movement is 5 to 10 centimeter per year. So even today, if continents are moving at the rate of 5 to 10 to 20 centimeter per year, they must be changing their latitudes and accordingly their, accordingly their overall solar insulation. Nowadays, it has all been measured. Now, what is what do we mean by it? For 5 to 10 centimeter per year means what? It is the rate of growth of our nail. We are not able to see the growth of our nail. But after a week, we are able to see that some 2, 3 or 4 millimeter nails have grown. I have tested myself when I gave a vote in 2017. And then I have tested that how this ink is moving up with the nail growth and in the almost four months it was almost lost so all the continents they are moving a student a uh, teacher has asked a student that you are not studying your geography properly alam tum aajkal geography kyo nahi pao rahe ho the student said in answer that my father is saying that world's geography is changing very fast. So that's why I am not learning because when it is changing, then why to learn? Now we have some indirect data to check that temperature is rising or not. When the thermometer was invented, people have started collecting temperature. Nowadays we don't collect temperature because we have different organization, for example, IMD, Indian, Indian Meteorological Department, many different um, weather apps 
they tell you the temperature and every day we see temperature but previously it used to be a very uh, important job of farmers and of uh, many different peoples who used to measure the temperature so we have got historical records from the ship from the farmers logs from travelers from diaries from newspaper accounts that what was the temperature at a particular place at at a particular time in a particular month so this is called a historical data or proxy data because we have to see that if the, there is a global warming that what is the reference point in the back what is the reference point in the back so people have data of temperature from 1370 to 1879 just imagine another way out is indirect way out to know that there was low temperature or high temperature is presence of huge rock blocks at a place where similar rock is not present in this picture you are saying seeing a huge rock block of a particular rock which does not have similar rock surrounding the area the similar rock may be present at 40 50 km from this place so how come this rock has come pehle to jcb hoti nahi thi badi badi cranes hoti nahi thi to ye rock yahan kaise aayi how come this rock has come here these rocks are called as erratics these are the indicators of presence of glaciers up to this very place glaciers can move huge rock blocks from one place to another so presence of this rock means the glacier must have been present up to this place but today they are not there why they are not there because they have receded why they have got receded because they have got melted why they have got melted because of global warming so this is another indirect effect a peak a peak was photographed at the same month same day in different years 1912 1970 2000 2006 2006 you can see that ice cap ice cover is reducing <coughs> ice cover is reducing so that is another indirect way to tell that overall global warming is taking place similarly we have rocks hanging from the caves they are called as stalactites and there are rocks which are rising from the caves floor they are called as stalagmites they have contours of layers precipitating drop by drop of calcium carbonate from the water they are called as stalactites and stalagmites for example this picture is from a cave of meghalaya now overall study of carbon hydrogen and oxygen isotopes from stalactite and stalagmite it has been worked out that global temperature is rising in northern hemisphere so this is another proxy data another evidence came from ice cores which have been taken out from the antarctica from the north pole and from many other places almost 18 km of cores have been collected and the gases which were trapped into that ice were analyzed for knowing the past composition of the atmosphere on the earth this again shows that carbon dioxide is increasing in percent in last 1 lakh years and that's why there is a more heat trapment and global warming so from the analysis of ice and glaciers the graph has been made that if you just observe the ice the temperature from 1600 to 1850 has remained same 
and then from 1850 it is rising and rising with a very little drops at 1900 and at 1975. Then we have got analysis of tree rings. If we cut a tree, a cross section, if we cut off a tree, you will find different rings, light and dark. Dark ring is of winter growth and light ring is of summer growth. The light ring is always thicker than the dark ring. The two ring means one light and one dark means one year. Now when scientists have studied carbon, oxygen and hydrogen isotopes, they have predicted that their percentage are varying with time. That shows that there is a global warming in general from 1850 onward with a little ice age in between 1800 to 1825. So people have studied indirectly and directly and the main focus was the two greenhouse gases that is carbon dioxide and methane. And if you see this graph, the percentage of carbon dioxide and methane in last 800 years are going up and down with a very secular trend but in last 50 years their increase has become almost vertical their increase has become almost vertical the carbon dioxide concentration in our atmosphere has increased from 280 per part million to 550 per part million that is almost double from 26 to 50 billion tons of carbon dioxide is added here. So the main culprit is carbon dioxide and methane. And methane. A very recent diagram which I have got, you can see that how much of carbon dioxide has increased, how much of CH4 has increased, how much of N2O has increased and how the temperature is increasing and in 2022 the average temperature increase has gone to 1.6 percent now carbon dioxide are coming from industry methane is coming from agricultural activity and because of ice melting in permafrost region and nitrous oxide is again coming from the industry. So this is what is we have. Now if we club all the data of direct and indirect method, instrumental data, reconstruction data, reconstruction data is smoother at 40 years, linear trend, etc. Then this is the trend that overall temperature from 1850 to 2000 and onward is increasing. This paper was published by Mac Kittrick from Canada and his paper was famous by the name of hockey stick paper. Because if you see this trend is just like a hockey stick. Like a hockey stick it has gone up. So now it has been proved that more than the natural cause, the cause lies with the human beings, the anthropogenic activity. Ye suraj ki saazish nahi hai, khud zami seek rahe hai. We cannot blame the nature, we have to blame ourselves. What is the issue? Why we should fear? climate change. There are some obvious reasons and there are some less obvious reasons. There are direct impact of global warming and there are some indirect impact. Indirect impact we may not be able to see, but it is there. And direct impact is of course there, which is global warming, melting of ice, more than off, loss of sweet water, increased desertification, more humidity, senior weather conditions, sea level rise, all are not good except increase in agriculture produce with the global warming with the more of carbon dioxide available to the plants the agriculture produce may increase but 
there are some less obvious reasons that is local to regional migration of people increase in certain diseases thermohaline conveyor means ocean current movement will be changed which brings la nina and el nino change in the agriculture pattern there will be lot of crop failure there will be animal migration there will be ecological imbalances and there will be lot of crop loss due to the extreme weather condition so the issue is that climate history the change in the climate the global change which is taking place in the climate is warning us to limit warming up to 2 degrees centigrade because humanity will not be able to adopt beyond that climate history warns us to limit warming to 2 degrees centigrade humans may not be able to adopt beyond that what will happen lot of extreme climate issues lot of lot of extreme weather condition which we keep hearing in the form of extreme cold extreme heat extreme cyclonic events extreme flooding you you just go through the newspaper you will find all these news 60% of us population under heat advisory or flash flood warning landslides flash flooding thori barish bari musibat see thori thori barish and bari musibat this is very common in all our cities all metropolitan cities we are facing this issue very recently we have seen a very extreme flood event in dubai i was in dubai in the month of uh, january very pristine very clean very good infrastructure but all has failed just because of excessive rain all has failed just because of excessive rain biblical flooding in dubai biblical flooding what is biblical flooding the flooding which has mentioned in bible and quran when no there was a flooding and uh, no the prophet no was having a boat and he asked that all those who can come to his boat will be alive and this will vanish so same kind of situation we see same kind of situation we see in many places including india ek nu hi nahi jo hame kashti mein bitha le warna asal to maujood hain toofan ke sare people who used to suffer they they know the, the the again see important issues with global warming raging uttarakhand wildfire fires disturb normal life where will the uttarakhandi go if this kind of uh, forest fire continues every year and at the same time in the same days two hour torrential rains claim at least 20 lives in telangana so this is the problem of global warming that is extreme weather now what is being done for this what is being done for this lot of international conferences are taking place <clears throat> to discuss the issue of global warming and climate change but still there is no result it all started from 1972 environment conference in stockholm and there were many i have listed only few from 1987 montreal Port protocol for the earth's ozone layer and then 1997 2000 2001 2002 2004 2005 2006 2008 11 12 13 then 14 16 17 17 17 mein four consensus 18 19 in 20 in 2020 there was no because of covid so we had these many international consensus ipcc and conference of parties cop cop 27 in uh, egypt perhaps yes in 2022 it, it it was taken place in egypt but still there is no solution deafening noises and muted outcome in 28 it was in dubai in 20, cop 28 it was in dubai and after that there was a 
flood, Dubai flood. Next, it is going to happen in Azerbaijan. So, lot of international conferences are taking place, but there is no solution. Countries are not coming to a single platform of checking the carbon dioxide emission because of development, economics versus resources versus emission. More the development, more the emission. The European world and the North, North, northern countries have emitted and have developed. Now they are trying to check the third world countries, the southern countries that you should check your emission. So this is the problem. This is the issue. China and India, they are saying that they will start thinking of checking the carbon dioxide emission after 2035. Means they will keep on emitting carbon dioxide and other pollutant gases up to 35. So the issue is that if this happens, the global warming will take place and global warming may go up to 2 degrees centigrade. As of now, it is 1.6 degree, degree centigrade. If it is not checked up to 1.5 degree, and if it is going to 2 degree centigrade, then it is going to affect a lot. Then it is going to affect a lot in terms of extinction of plant and animals, extinction of coral reefs, sea level rise, crop failure, sea ice, per amount of sea ice, extreme heat condition, water scarcity. 1.5 degree versus 2 degree. As I have shown you a newspaper title that humanity will not be able to adopt the temperatures if it goes beyond 2 degree centigrade on an average. So this is the issue of climate change, especially the global warming. What to do, how to do, that is an important thing. Now, from my point of view, what is the bigger issue? What is the bigger issue? The human-induced climatic disorder, that is climate change because of anthropogenic activity, or human-induced environmental disorder? environment which is immediate surrounding to us. The climate change comes afterwards, but before that, what comes the environmental disorders in the form of pollution? In the form of pollution. Almost 100 people world over are dying every 30 minutes due to various diseases caused by environmental disorders. In a news, Urdu newspaper on 21st June, a news came which says that because of air pollution in India, every day 464 students, <coughs> 464 kids are dying. 464 kids are dying every day because of air pollution. Lacks of peoples in the world are threatened by new threats of Zika, Ebola, Dengue, Cancer, Flu, Diabetes, Coronavirus, etc. Polluted drinking water and atmosphere with no means of controls are taking toll on human life. According to the global burden of diseases, 138 people per lakh years in India died in 2015 due to the pollution. Lancet, Lancet publishes this kind of studies. Lancet Journal from Britain publishes this kind of journal. Now this is a, a picture of Delhi and national capital region, which shows the pollution level. Highest is dark red and lowest lower is the light yellow. But all beyond average quality index of the air. So whole area around Delhi is highly polluted. If you happen to go to Ghaziabad, you will not be able to breathe. One will not be able to breathe in Ghaziabad because of very heavy air pollution because of industrialization. 
seven years ago or ten years ago, everyone saw Delhi is here, take a deadly U-turn, but no one did a thing. When government has made compulsory that all vehicles will fly on um, CNG, the pollution level dropped in Delhi. But again, it started rising. Despite the fact that we are still using CNG in Delhi, but the number of vehicles have increased in so much numbers that whatever silver lining which we got has all got rubbed out and vanished. India is diabetes capital of the world. Every one out of three is diabetic. Why it is so? A data came in 2016 that top 10 selling drugs in India, out of top 10 selling drugs in India, the five are of diabetes. Why it is so? What could be the reason? What could be the reason? The problems what we are having today, we have stressed our earth a lot. And whenever you put stress, there will be some deformation, there will be some strain. Population growth will lead to food production and distribution. Waste generation and disposal will lead to air, land and water pollution. Indiscriminate resource exploitation will lead to land degradation. Energy demand, if it is increases, it will leave a lot of carbon footprint and this will affect the climate change. Infrastructure development, we go on developing infrastructure, we are going to lose our ecosystem and biodiversity. So anthropogenic stresses have reflected or are, are getting reflected into space. The problem is of waste disposal. The problem of waste generation and waste disposal. The government came up with the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan 2014. It is putting 60,000 crore rupees per year for cleaning our system. To make our system clean. But do we? Do we see anything which is remarkable as far as cleaning of the uh, surrounding of our uh, living areas are concerned? We are drowning into our garbage. We are drowning into our garbage. We have problem of open defecation. Open defecation lead to malnutrition. We have problem of diarrhea and encephalitis in our rural populace, which is more in less educated states as compared to highly educated states. We have lesser number of toilets. So these are the different issues. Where to put our waste? We have created mountains and hills of waste. And those hills of waste, they are failing through a process of sliding and even killing people. So this is the issue. Landfill sites are getting choked with the solid waste. Where to go to put our solid waste? Your mohallas may be clean, but where will the solid waste go? The waste, solid waste generation has increased. From 2000 to 2015 in Delhi, the waste generation has increased by 2075%. 2075%, just imagine. In Bangalore, 1750%. In Hyderabad, 1,155%, Mumbai, 105%, Chennai, 60%, Ahmedabad, 40%, Kolkata, only 8.3%. Why this disparity? Why Calcutta waste are only have risen in 15 years by 8.5%, but in Delhi, 2,075%? What could be the reason? More online buying, perhaps. 
so the biggest problem nowadays is where to keep your waste disease caused by meerut waste ground claims 22 lives should meerut suffer to keep ghaziabad clean the problem is where to take our waste are we a filthy nation because waste generation is from each and every house the responsibility lies with each and every person who has to see that how much waste he is creating government will not be able to come at par with the amount of waste getting generated by the society we do not bother where our waste go out once it is out of our house with growing urbanization industrialization and rising consumerism it is a problem multiplying at an ever increasing acceleration the india today magazine 1993 it has a cover story can we clean the mess and then it has to do the same cover story after 21 years in 2014 by again a cover story with a title dirty nation what is this place can anybody identify this place can anybody identify this place behind the taj mahal and with four ground full of trash so even we are not able to clean the place from where we are getting maximum of earning as far as of tourism in, is concerned from all over india now diabetes again why is everywhere bad air link to diabetes india at greater risk that means we have diabetes all over india including villages which are very remotely present in districts which have no industry but they are having persons with diabetes my own farmer is having diabetes he is of my age but he is having diabetes means something to do with the air pollution which can reach anywhere which can reach anywhere and can create some metabolic change in your body and will have mal functioning of our pancreas will lead to the diabetes so air pollution is a big issue parali burning in punjab and haryana every year there is a lot of hue and cry but people from punjab and haryana must also be suffering more than what the delhi people are suffering those people who will burn the parali the immediate pollution will affect them rather than people at delhi so if we as a country do not check the carbon dioxide emission then it will be we who will suffer first then people from other countries will suffer now we see business in each and every kind of issue we have started putting what you call air purifier in our houses and big smoke towers in different cities to clean the air in delhi in chandigarh in ahmedabad in gandhinagar in delhi but all they have failed so first create do do and then try to make boom so when we are going to think on the line that pollution and climate change is going to bring business to us then things will not come in our control so the issue is consumerism we are caught up in the network of market forces now the market has come into our hands we don't have to go to the market and anything we see on the phone we can bring it there is ask her mom that you need more legs rather, rather than more shoes previously we used to have only one pair or two pair of shoes now we have five six or seven pair of shoes so this is leading to more and more uh, carbon dioxide emission and more and more garbage 
emission. Garbage is a collector's item. This is that is the issue. Now, when air is polluted, when land is polluted, the immediate effects come on the water. The drinking water gets polluted. Once drinking water gets polluted, then the things become very dangerous because we have only 2.5 percent of water which is sweet, potable, or fresh water. The rest of the water, 97.5 is saline water, cannot be used directly. Out of this 2.5 percent, 30 percent is available as a groundwater. Rest is maximum is with the ice, frozen water. So we have to rely on the groundwater because our lakes and rivers are polluted. So we cannot rely on the potable water from, from uh, rivers or lakes. <laughs> our groundwater level is going down and down. Our groundwater level is going down and down because of indiscriminate use of water in agriculture and in our household also. Even in our universities and colleges, we indiscriminately use water. We irrigate our fields, our lawns by flooding method. That means we open the wall and the water fills the ground and overnight it starts running and then on the next day we close it. So we have to shift to sprinkling water because the water is something very important, very precious. We have to check on our water usage. We have to use water very judiciously, judiciously because this is a going to be a big issue and big problem. It is very easy nowadays to buy water bottle. Nowadays in our meetings, we have use and throw water bottles. But a one liter water bottle, for creating one liter water bottle, we have to waste more than thrice the amount. Eight liter pani ke liye, we have to waste three liters of pani. This is the history, this is the story of so called bottled water. It is very easy to buy, but if you go into the nitty gritty of preparation of this water, we are losing a lot of water by this method. So we have to check on our water usage, we have to recycle our water. We have to use this recycled water for irrigation and for industrial use. In our university, we have two plants of treating wastewater. One is uh, running on electricity, another is running on a natural process. And you can see the water which is being cleaned through natural process of cleaning in one of the students' hands. <coughs> We are wasting a lot of water in washing our utensils. No one checks that how much water we are wasting. We are wasting a lot of water through our washing machine. We don't know that how much water is getting wasted. So we have to think over this. Now, almost every one of us used to have RO. Every one of us. And in this RO, again, the same logic fits that to create one liter of water, we waste three liter of water through the drain. We have to collect this water. This is my own house. I used to collect all the water which is draining out from the machine and I use this water for bathing, for washing clothes and if for irrigating my plants. So this is something very important. We as a teacher have responsibility to do this. Similarly, with increasing pollution, with increasing climate change, it is affecting our biodiversity. A lot of animals and plants are getting vanished because of some natural, some anthropogenic activities and also because of selective adoption of animals and plants. And this biodiversity is very important because it is linked with the whole ecology. Anthropogenic stresses are the drivers of change as far as biodiversity is concerned. We are, we are cutting forests, 
for agriculture we are cutting forest for mining we are cutting forest for infrastructure development while cutting forest we are losing lot of animals and plants even those animals and plants which have not yet been identified and classified which have not yet been classified and identified one of our vice chancellor professor p k abdul aziz used to say that even a blade of grass even a blade of grass gives you oxygen even a blade of grass gives you oxygen it is our habit ki wherever we see the unwanted growth of grass we cut it out we 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 turn it out but we should not because even the grass is giving you oxygen and for survival of humanity and animals oxygen is a must so lot of animals and plants are getting extinct every year they are getting extinct every year <clears throat> so we have to see that as a teacher as a student as a college as a university what we can do what could be the solution what could be the solution from where the solution will come from where the solution will come because till date none of the country none of the organization has come up with any major paradigm shift as far as checking the global warming and climate change is concerned what can we do simply observe these days international environmental education day international co2 emission day world forestry day world water day world meteorological day and so on and so forth should we observe these days only for a that day or we should keep observing these important issues all through the year there are some known voices for example this greta thunberg who is uh, leading a strike in sweden every friday when she was in class 8 9 and 10 she is a lone voice for climate change and related issues similarly there are a lot of ngos who are taking responsibility on to themselves for raising the issue of climate change there are some individual extreme activists for example green peace for example individuals who put drones into heathrow airport so that flights could not take place because the flights create maximum carbon dioxide <coughs> man walks 700 km backward to highlight deforestation there was a senator in united states david buckel who put oil petrol onto him and lit himself with match stick and said that in this way the world is the world will burn because of excessive use of oil and petroleum and petroleum gas and he died he said as i am dying in the same way the world will die because of over use of some scientists in india have said csr scientists have said that we should use unpressed clocks on mondays to save electricity iit professor has pledged that he will wear wrinkled clothes for 5 or 10 years he has he has ear mark we must draw from india's climate history this respected topography hydrology and nature as a capital but now i put a lot of question mark on this statement now it is not the case it is not the case solar panels have come up in a big way as a solution to minimize the carbon dioxide emission from uh, carbon uh, burning by burning coal so the solar panels they have come up in a big way this is a solar panel in our university which is one of the biggest all over the india in any university we have rooftop mounted solar panels in almost all the buildings in university and then we have this ground mounted panel so this is the big issue which we have nowadays you can see <clears throat> these are the cycles which were left by the labors when they 
came from Punjab and Haryana to Saharanpur in the COVID times, and then they went back to their places from the trains arranged by the government. These cycles now they are rotting. This is the most important eco-friendly uh, machine in Denmark. We have six lakh population with six lakh fifty thousand uh, uh, cycles in uh, Copenhagen, capital of. Uh, Denmark. Anybody can take any cycle and can move anywhere. We have left this machine. We are using cars and scooters and motorcycles. So we have a responsibility to see that we should minimize on travel using um, petroleum and diesel, oil and diesel, petrol and diesel. Save trees by saving pa paper. Save paper. Ban homework. Reform the cities. Plant as many as trees you can. This year in IPL, the IPL has pledged that on every <coughs> ball on which there is no run made, that means dot balls, they have pledged to put 500 trees. They have put to pledge 500 trees for each dot ball. Let's see that. If they come true to their pledge. So, climate change, biodiversity, all these things are interlinked with each other. We have to see this. We have to see that what our actions they are doing, which are doing bad to our climate. We have to increase number of trees. We have to reduce carbon emission. We have to reduce concrete jungle. We have to increase number of lakes, but it is not very easy. It is easy to set, but not easy to act. This time, the heat was so high in Aligarh that municipal corporation had to put these green sheets to put bring in some shade. This is for the first time. So this is again a very good indicator that there is a global warming. So many, maybe at many different places. So almost I am coming to my uh, end of this topic. I would like you to read this statement for by Sarpalli Radha Krishnan. The human being is nothing more than the latest of a long series of living creatures. Even if evolution of life does not proceed higher, then the human species Science threatens us with the possibility of its extinction. Yani, the Sarpalli Radha Krishnan Sahib ye keh rahe hain ki ho sakta hai ki ye world isi liye banaya gaya ho ki human beings aayenge aur rahenge. Lekin hum human beings hi is country, is world ko vanish karne pe tule hoge. We the scientists, we will lead to the extinction. Already five extinctions have taken place all over the world five extinctions have taken place in last 4550 million years especially in last 500 million years life came onto the earth in last 560 million years and in last 560 million years five extinctions have already taken place the last one was when dinosaur got extinct from the land and ammonite has got extinct from the ocean. So, are we heading towards sixth extinction? Are we heading towards sixth extinction? There is a very good book by Elizabeth Holbert, who have observed, who have traveled to different places all over the world, met scientists who are working on the probability of sixth extinction, and has written this book. Another book has come. How to survive in this global warming? How to survive in this global warming? So that means the issue of global warming is there, and we have to see that how to save humanity from this global warming. This is a painting which I have photographed at Fortis Escort Hospital at, at uh, Delhi. Can anybody tell me that what this, uh, what this, uh, what this uh, picture tries to say? Can anybody tell that what 
what this picture tries to say. Anyone? Anyone? Can lung health? Yes. This is a painting that you increase the greenery. You increase the greenery so that our lungs have better oxygen. But in the same hospital, in the same hospital, they have planted, they have these two plants. Can anybody identify these plants? Can anybody identify these plants? These are plastic plants. These are plastic plants. The same hospital which is saying that you should plant trees, they are putting plastic plants. Are these plastic plants are going to put any help? See, this is the commissioner of Aligarh City's house where there is a emblem, green Aligarh, clean Aligarh, and he has put on his wall the plastic grass. See, how can we expect the common people to think for protecting climate? When the government officials and the learned people, they are putting plastic grass to decorate their wall and then they are putting the emblem green alligator and clean alligator. These are the trees. Can anybody identify these trees? Which tree it is? Can anybody identify this tree? No, this is Ashoka. 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 How, how big Ashoka tree used to be? How big it is? Has anybody had chance to see the Ashoka tree? How big it used to? It's a huge tree. But what we are doing in university, this is our electronics department. They have put these Ashoka trees. Their Mali used to cut it every few days. And what has happened? In 2022, two trees have died and they have more shortened these trees. Is it the purpose of planting the tree? Is it the purpose of planting the tree? Now, if anyone can identify these two pictures at the top, all the leaves are torn. They have been torn by the pedestrian who are moving. Maybe students, maybe any, anyone. It is in our university. But see, in the COVID period, same tree have got very pristine and clean and clear and full leaf. So we are harming the climate even by our very small actions. The lower two trees, two, two pictures, they show that in COVID period when there was a lockdown, the plants have taken over the food path. This is the road going to my department, engineering college. So if we allow nature, the nature will, will help us. Jaan hai to jahan hai, there is a proverb. Rajan Habib Faja, who was secretary in Ministry of Environment, has changed this proverb. To Jahan hai to Jahan hai. If there is a world, then we are there. If there is a world, then we are there. Ghar ke guldano mein shahid phool honge kaagzi. In the flower pot, we will have flowers of paper or plastic. Or pardo pe printed titliya reh jayengi. And the butterfly, butterflies we will be able to see as a print on our curtains. So this is all. <coughs> our founder, Sir Sayyad Ahmad Khan, who has founded this university, he was lampooned in a cartoon in 1881. Just imagine, in 1881, he was lampooned for his love towards wild plants and wildlife. You can see snakes and 
cactus around him he was lampooned by the then journalist that he is a naturey jogi he is a jogi of nature so just imagine in 1881 he was thinking on the lines which we have to think today that's all from my side thank you if you have any comment or any suggestion please write down or if you have any query you can ask any question shakir saab are you there i have asked you to answer few questions in the query uh, but i didn't got any answer on the very first slide i was having few queries take the screenshot of the queries which i have put you can answer and mail me afterwards i'll just putting the first slide <clears throat> you can take the screenshot and you can answer it later on no question 